I was asked recently by a, a friend and student uh, to show how to do Spanish moss. Uh, last year I did a workshop down in uh, outside of Savannah, Georgia, and uh, that was one of the subjects that I took a lot of pictures of. And so I've done never, a number of paintings. Uh, here's one of them. Uh, this is on a textured paper, which uh, really allows the brush strokes to show up. And uh, the paper I used on that is by Arteza, and it's uh, the premium. At first, I didn't think I'd like the premium, so I crossed it off. I know they have an expert brand, but uh, the premium is really kind of fun. That's what this is done on. I like I like that texture. Um, so I'll, I will do a, a quick demo, and I'll use that paper for this. Here's another a version of Spanish moss. It's a larger painting. And how do I get that texture? How do I get that feeling of Spanish moss? Um, so let's uh, let's go ahead and approach that. I'm going to turn my paper this way because of the texture. I think I want that effect. And let's just throw in a sky. Let's just throw in some kind of a simple little sky. Let's just kind of put in some warm colors, some cool colors, maybe even some lemon yellow. So just a warm, inviting sky. Let's dry that. The brush I use for the sky is by Creative Mark. It's called the Harmony Squirrel Quill Brush. And uh, I've used this an awful lot, so you can't see the name on it, but it's by Creative Mark, and this is a number six. Uh, and I paint the green tips on, so don't pay any attention to those. You won't find the, the brush with the green tips. But this is my favorite brush in what I call the mop brush series. Okay, I'm just going to put a few basic branches in here. I'm going to start with some, uh, oh, some ultramarine blue, some burnt umber, maybe a touch of panes because I want it to be kind of dark. Maybe a little burnt umber in here also. Let's just see what that looks like. Take a little bit more blue. I got a bright sky, so I want the uh, the trees to be more in shadow. So I'm gonna go darker, maybe darker than normal, actually. So, I'm just gonna print out a few limbs. Then I'm going to take a smaller version of that same brush, again by Creative Mark. This is the number four. So I'm going to take the same color I used, I just used for the tree. And I'm going to add some sap green to it. So it's ultra sap green. Probably a touch of burnt, uh, a touch of Payne's gray, I should say, with that. I want a dark, dark color to match what's going on in here. Something very similar to that. And if you notice in this one, there's actually some violets in here. Those are cool colors that uh, you would pick up in the shade, shaded areas. Uh, and it uh, really gives that feeling of coolness if you get into the uh, violets or the blue violets. So my goal right now is to get this dark enough. Okay, so what I do then is I drag the brush, give it a quarter turn to fan it out. If it doesn't fan out, that means there's still too much water in the brush. So I'm gonna fan it out a couple more times till I get it to where I like it. And that's getting pretty close right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this kind of action with my hand. Hold the brush out near the end and drag the brush. And I'll turn it sideways so I get more of a blade to it. So I have a little more variety in what's going on here. I'm going to take a smaller brush now and just give a little detail um, to some of these areas. 
Just little touches. Just makes it a little more interesting if I get in here and give this little bit of detail with, to it without going, without going too heavy. Some areas it's a little heavier, a little thicker. I can go a little more solid with the areas in here, up here. So we got a warm sky, <clears throat> we got dark trees in the foreground, and on the uh, shadow side, which uh, I'm going to make the right side the shadow side, I'm going to take uh, some titanium white, and I'm going to mix some ultramarine blue with that. That's that color right there, but I'm going to add a little quinacridone violet to it. You can see that color, very cool temperature-wise, and that's what I'm after. And on the shadow sides, I'll come in here on the bottoms, up deep, up underneath here, these areas. Okay, and I'm fanning that brush out also. Add a little more white to it. I want it to stand out just a little bit more. And I'll do the same thing on some of the uh, Spanish moss here too. Let's get some of those cool temperatures in there. And in some areas, I might want it to be more on the green side. So I'm gonna take some lemon yellow, some sap green, and just get that, that variety of color. And that's how I would paint Spanish moss. Thanks for watching.